A once in a lifetime event, a total solar eclipse, San Antonio and the Hill Country in the path of totality. And thousands making the trip to witness the space spectacle of the year. We're live from all of the best viewing spots. And get your eclipse viewing glasses ready. How to make sure you're using the right ones to protect your eyes. Welcome to our Great American Eclipse Special. I'm Andre Castoreno. And I'm Jeremy Baker. We are just minutes away from the solar eclipse reaching parts of San Antonio. That's right. We've got team coverage. Our crews are set up along the best viewing spots in Kerrville, Bernie and San Antonio. But first, let's talk about the weather conditions this afternoon leading up to that eclipse. Uh, we're talking about a lot of cloud cover out there right now, unfortunately, and you can see it's very thick, especially from Bear County south and eastward. But further to the northwest in the hill country where the longest totality is the path of totality. That's where we do have some breaks in the clouds. So Kerrville looking out. The partial eclipse has already begun. The sky will really start to darken in the next few minutes and the maximum of the eclipse in San Antonio at 134. It all ends at 255. Of course, the times change by a few minutes. If you're in that path of totality, uh, Kerrville, Fredericksburg, looking at the longest there, just over four minutes or close to four and a half minutes. And on the outside of that path of totality, that's about 100 miles wide, about a two to three minute period of total darkness. So even in San Antonio, northwest San Antonio, we are going to see total darkness, not quite as long as Kerrville. It's amazing. It's only four minutes long, but so mm -hmm. many people traveled to our area to experience it. Unfortunately, though, those clouds. Yeah. can't see much of the beginning of it. Exactly. But like we said, thousands traveling to Texas to witness this rare celestial event. Paul Morales has been in Kerrville since this morning. Paul, how's it going up there? Yeah. Well, I, I can tell you there's a lot of excitement. I mean, folks are really excited. Uh, I'll just start off with the weather. Uh, you know, we had quite a bit of sunshine about an hour ago, but unfortunately, I think that warm, warm air is rise in. percent cloud cover. I do see a few breaks here and there, so hopefully we'll get lucky, but of course the time is getting closer and closer, and uh, a lot of folks are kind of struggling to see the eclipse, but you know, when I got here this morning, there were, weren't very many people, but now as you can see, just full here at the park, I'm here at Luis Hayes Park. There's the State Highway 16 bridge that goes over the Guadalupe River. Got all kinds of vendors here, and people from all over, and when I say people from all over the place, I would say, this is an estimate, I would say 9,500 Canada, Mexico, France even, and from states all over the place. As far as Hawaii folks are here, and every one of them I asked them, you know, why'd you pick Kerrville? And every single one said, because climatology, this was the best out of the whole strip all across the nation. This year is not one of those years. When you're in a space with so many people, mm -hmm. you start getting that interruption. But we're going to check back in with Paul in just a bit. But a lots of events around town mm -hmm. are happening for the kids, for students in our area, so they can learn a lot about this rare event. That's right. And one of those places at Wolf Stadium, that's where we find Weather Chief Bill Taylor, where they're not just watching the eclipse, but all sorts of other activities for the kids. Looks like Bill's having fun. He's our very own big kid. <laughs> you know I'm a big kid. I'm a kid at heart, Jeremy. Hi, Audrey. It's a wonderful day out here despite the cloud cover, something we just couldn't do anything about. But April 8th arrives. It's the first total solar eclipse here in more than 620 years. That's mind-blowing. There's not going to be another one until 2343 in San Antonio, Texas. That's why this is so special. That's why these students are here, taking it all in. We've been showing different videos and different instructional opportunities to, you know, just kind of get them interested in science and get them worked into this great field of research. I want to bring in Stephanie Garcia, who kind of put all this together, right, Steph? Yes, I've been working with so many partners in our city, from academia to nonprofits and museums. We're part of the Alamo STEM ecosystem, and we've been dreaming of an event like this that we could do together for years. So it's so great to be able to just make history together with all of these students and families. 
How long has the ecosystem been up and going? You know, our mayor and our city, we came together around 2017 and we became a designated international STEM learning ecosystem, which is incredibly competitive. Yeah. And so we're a bunch of passionate people. We're community owned. We're all about community over competition. We just want to support our students and educators in STEM. So what we arrive at today is this incredible opportunity Absolutely. to put science in these kids' hands, right? Yes, that's, it. that's the goal, to be hands-on to make a lasting memory for time to come and for us I hear oh, lots a little of bit of, yeah we're getting some cheers oh, the so sun's coming out a little bit that's, incredible. <laughs> that's awesome so you can definitely see everybody's putting their glasses on and the clouds will break and you'll see that partial and it's getting a little darker actually yes yes We've got our viewers ready, thanks got, to the city yeah. of San Antonio. 6,000 viewers. And now the clouds are back, so wow. it's in and out. I know, it's in and out today, but no matter what, everyone's having a great time. Yeah, tell me about the stations, because you're getting a lot of good interaction. The students are going, there's up to like a dozen different spots they can hit, right? Exactly. We've got our San Antonio Public Library, Sweary. We've got all these tables where they're doing hands-on learning. My coding booth is at IDRA's table, so we're learning how to code you're educational coding. games. Yes. yes. That's so we've so got cool. space games, eclipse simulators, all on code.org. It's really fun and, and hands-on. The time capsule. I thought this was a great idea, Stephanie. It's Tell me about the time capsule. The best. We can write a little note to come back to in the future. It is so cool. Everybody's trying to leave their stamp and really be a part of history in the making. Yeah, we're going to open this, or yeah. they're going to open this, because uh -huh. we won't be here. But in the year 2343, <laughs> yeah, when the next total solar happens, exactly. they'll open this time capsule. I'm going to put a question in there. Yeah. Do y'all have ask, flying cars? I know, flying cars. When are they coming already? Exactly. We're all waiting for it. <laughs> I'm serious, right? But no, I love how this community came together and this ecosystem. This was kind of a Super Bowl for you guys. It really so, is. so what's next? You know, we've got lots of student events, educator serving events all the time. Around February every year, we have an annual STEM educator conference. It's free for all teachers. So we get really good hands-on STEM learning for every teacher K-12. So we all put together that event every year, as well as a youth summit, where we teach kids about career awareness in STEM, because they can become the next meteorologist. Exactly. And they can do anything they want in STEM. It's so versatile, and they just don't know about it. So you know, since the spotlight's been turned on to STEM, what's been the feedback? What kind of response are you seeing with students? You know, families are actually coming to us a lot saying, hey, my student is really interested in coding or science. What can I do to support them? And that's what we try to do. We support the parents as well to let them know what opportunities there are. We've got all these different vendors here in orgs that have summer camps, every learning opportunity, mentorship in STEM. That's what we're about. That's so cool. Stephanie Garcia, thank, thank you so you. much. Oh, and if so someone wants to know here. more about the Alamo yes. ecosystem and what you're doing with this STEM project, yes. how can they find out? Absolutely. Go to alamostemecosystem.org. And our website's there and our email's there as well. Perfect. Reach out to Stephanie, us thanks again for thank everything you. you're doing Appreciate today. You. It's so awesome because, again, the clouds are breaking at times. We're getting that experience, you know, a snippet here, a snippet there. But it's exciting to have all these students out here getting a hands-on look at science because station by station, they even have a little bingo card to show what they've done at each one of these so that they're able to communicate exactly what they're learning. So all is not lost by any means. We're really getting some science into these kids' hands. All right, so I'm noticing, I mean, I'm not looking at my glasses because we're still obscured with that cloud cover. It really kind of thickened, you know, this morning there were some brief breaks and I was getting excited. But now that we've gotten into the afternoon on a very humid afternoon, by the way, it's really kind of thickened up, which by the way, there are some pretty good rain chances moving into overnight and early Tuesday, and then again, probably Tuesday night and even Wednesday morning. It looks like we got three rounds of rain on the way. I just wish we could have substituted last week's clear days. I think we had Tuesday, Wednesday, there wasn't one cloud in the sky. Why couldn't that be today, right? All right, back to you guys in the studio for now, but from Nelson Wolf Stadium, I'm Bill Taylor. The big watch party continues. You're absolutely right. I wish we would have had those clear skies. Seriously, yeah. <laughs> All right, but we want to see how you are experiencing the eclipse. Don't point your camera at the sun, of course, but share your scenes of friends and family watching today's events. You can send photos and videos by texting us at 210-366-0020 or by submitting them on the Ken's 5 app. 
We'll be showing scenes from around our area here on air and on Ken's 5 News and online at kens5.com. And there's a very special event going on in Northwest San Antonio where The Rock at La Cantera is hosting a science-based eclipse watch party for students at Frost Plaza. One of the highlights, they've got a 40-foot video wall, so even if the sky clouds wow. up like it is now, the kids will still be able to watch a NASA feed of the rare spectacle. And Ken's 5 Sue Kalberg is there with 500 of her new best friends. That's a lot of friends, Sue. <laughs> Exactly. And I have to tell you, these kids are from schools all over the South Side, public schools, charter schools, a wide variety of things. And not only are we watching it on the big screen while we were just focused on Mazatlan, I had to put my glasses on real quick because the clouds just broke here. And uh, it's, it's a fingernail up here where we are right here at the Rock at La Cantera. So this is a really cool deal because all of these kids attend schools that were not in the path of totality. So they're here and they've got a much better view, assuming we continue to get those little bitty teeny tiny breaks in the clouds that make everybody happy. Now District 4 City Council Rep Adriana Rocha Garcia, she hatched this plan to bring all these kids here and we asked her why an event like this helps the kids of her district touch the future don't have enough exposure to STEM and STEAM actually and so it's important that we come together as a community because this is where our future is. When we think about the future of anything in any industry it involves science, technology, education and math and our students need to learn that it's fun to do STEM and STEAM of course introducing the arts is also critical. I'm here to tell you, when I saw the clouds break a second ago, I nearly jumped up and down because it's up there and it's visible right now. Now, in a few more minutes, we're going to be in the path of totality and the sun will be right above that big screen. So we are uh, here and we feel the pal palpable excitement of the kids. We're going to stay with it. Live at The Rock at La Cantera, Sue Calberg, Ken's 5. Thank you, Sue. So Sue is joining us from La Cantera. Of course, we have people all over South Texas like Hannah Tita. Yeah, that's right. She is in Bernie at Main Plaza where a lot of people headed out uh, over the weekend. They said they were expecting to get hundreds of people. Hannah's been talking to a lot of people and Hannah, you've had some amazing stories of just people making different connections and people really making sure that they're seeing these this eclipse together. That's right, Audrey, some great, great stories. I gotta tell you though, for one second, we saw the sun peeking through the clouds. You can see the moon, you know, crossing the path and everyone got so excited. There's a lot of nervous tension here in uh, Bernie. Really, every time the clouds break a bit, just everyone starts cheering, getting excited. And then of course, when the clouds roll back over, uh, there's, you know, definitely some visible disappointment, especially for the kids. But I'm gonna step out of the way here so you can see just how packed Main Plaza is. What's interesting is the city of Bernie did not uh, plan a specific viewing event for the solar eclipse for safety reasons. And uh, people, though, still coming out to Main Plaza. This is a really good place to be. Uh, families bringing out their own lawn chairs and their blankets. Um, as you said, Audrey, we've talked to people, so many people here today from out of state, even from out of country. Visit Bernie says there are people from all types of locations that flew here from France, Germany, England, Japan, Taiwan. Lots of people, uh, even from out of state. We talked to uh, two ladies, one from Wisconsin, one from uh, Tucson, Arizona, and they uh, they actually have a really cool story that we'll get to a little bit later. But uh, Visit Bernie says that, um, you know, just the majority of visitors here in the plaza and here in Bernie seem to be from Bernie and San Antonio. Um, we did speak with a local photographer, Morgan Hinson, and he was just talking about, um, you know, how much he, you know, invested into getting the perfect shot. He bought some equipment for his camera. Take a listen to what he had to say. Getting past the fact of this is a once in a lifetime opportunity for me. I mean, I might not have time to travel to, you know, Washington or anything like that to go get more photos. 
And so uh, we're just going to take one more look up at the clouds because I want you guys to see, you know, really what we're seeing out here in Bernie. Um, it is starting to get a little bit darker and we do know that the moon is, you know, traveling in front of the sun because we saw that when the clouds broke. But, you know, just a lot of heavy cloud cover right now. So we're just hoping for a break in the clouds um, when we, you know, hit totality. Um, even if that doesn't happen, though, it will get dark, I'm sure. And a lot of, you know, um, silence, I'm sure, will fall over this, you know, as a lot of people have traveled here for this moment and it really is a historic moment so I'm gonna throw things back to you in the studio and hopefully we have you know um, some you know better viewing opportunities uh, throughout the Texas Hill Country but here you know just uh, just hoping for another break in the clouds. Jeremy. Absolutely. All right. Thanks so much, Hannah. It does look like there's a lot of people yeah, out there. Yeah, yeah, but a lot are disappointed too. I know, <laughs> but another area of town that has a lot of people or area of the whole country, that's Kerrville. That's right, and that's where we find meteorologist Paul Morellis. He's been there throughout the day today in Kerrville. That's where it's expected to have a duration of four minutes and 24 seconds. Paul, the, the longest four and a half minutes of anywhere in the path. How cool is that that you get to be right there? He's, he's impressed. He's thinking. Oh, I, I think it's great. I mean, <laughs> I asked a couple of months ago, I said, I want to be in Kerrville on April 8th and I'm here, but, I, but I've, but I've, but I've got to say, what are we breaking up? Can you not hear me? Can you not see me? Um, but I've, but I've got to say that I'm really disappointed. You know, we had some warm air about an hour ago and the clouds just kind of, Okay, we had some uh, warm air about an hour ago. The sun was really out. I would say we were down to about 60% cloud coverage. And now, since it got so warm, we are totally socked in. I mean, I would say at least 98% cloud cover. Lots and lots of clouds. Uh, the thing that's really interesting, though, I want you to shoot up here. I have not seen this all day, and we're just now seeing this. It's starting to get really dark, uh, you know, so pretty dark here in Kerrville. And I've noticed these birds, instead of hanging around under the bridge, they're like flying around kind of in circles, and that's probably part of what we're going to see as far as wildlife doing some different things. I, I haven't seen those kind of birds uh, venture much out from that bridge all day long, but they're starting to venture out a little bit. Okay, so I'm curious exactly what to expect. I'm noticing that it's getting darker, and I can't figure out, honestly, if it's because of the cloud cover or the eclipse. But uh, we've seen some interesting things out here as well. I mean, some interesting stuff. But anyway, uh, sir, what's your name? Uh, Mike Ryan. Okay, Mike. Mike, I want to know exactly what to expect. It's coming up here in about 10 minutes or so. Mike, how many eclipses have you been in? Uh, this will be the 10th total solar eclipse. 10th total solar eclipse. That's quite amazing. And you probably you saw those all around the world. Uh, yes, a number of places. Everywhere from the frozen fields of Canada to 110 degrees in Turkey. Okay. <laughs> so you were telling me earlier that there's only one of those that you woke up in the morning and you're like, Totally clear skies. That was Turkey. Yeah. Uh, it, th it was the only time that we knew for certain that we would see it without any threat from cloud cover. Yeah. There was a high, wispy, uh, thin cirrus, but uh, not sufficient to, <laughs> to obscure. At this point, we would take that because it's pretty cloudy out here. Okay, with these clouds, since you've seen all kinds, you met your wife when it was totally raining during so total solar rain. That's amazing, though, that they've been to so many, even yeah. with all the cloud cover, they're still so dedicated and, to see it. And nine out of ten of this, there were clouds in the way. Yeah. I never would have thought that high. Amazing. Yeah. But right now, we want to show you this live look from Torreon, Mexico, where the totality started around 109. That's amazing. That's what we would have seen, right? If exactly. These clouds. Yeah, and Stanford is going to see a whole lot of great clouds and, and it'll get dark. But uh, down there, they've got the uh, totality for four minutes and 11 seconds. So about 20 seconds shy of Kerrville, but that's not too bad right there. Yeah. And we're absolutely. looking at it now. Look at that. Yeah, but you can't look directly at the sun. It's never a good idea. And that's no different with the upcoming, you know, solar eclipse that we're all waiting for. Yeah. Absolutely, and unfortunately we don't have those clear skies, but it was looking like that for several days, but people still traveled for thousands and thousands of miles to get here. Yep. And what a great boost for little towns in the area. Yeah, absolutely. So definitely if you have glasses for the solar eclipse, you got to know which are legit. You looked into it. Yeah, you got to get the ones with the ISO markings that's on the inside, but that's just one of the ways to find out they're legit. There are other ways and can use old eclipse glasses from previous ones. 
I looked into that. I'll let you know. Sunglasses are important to wear on a normal day, but on the day of the eclipse, you'll need these specs to safely watch the spectacle without damaging your eyes. Staring at the sun for even as little as a minute can cause solar retinopathy, which is damage to the retina, the film in the back of the eye, and that damage can cause permanent vision loss. They're being sold everywhere across South Texas. Quick Trip has them. This vape store downtown is even selling this super special eyewear, and many libraries are giving them away for free. It's a little bit like if you've ever seen the, the like the emergency blankets you get in outdoor stores that it's like a plasticky tinfoil. Here's what you need to use ISO certified safe solar eclipse glasses. These protect your eyes when the sun is not yet fully eclipsed. Keep in mind, sunglasses in most welding filters aren't dark enough to protect your eyes and it could eventually lead to damage. As long as there is any part of the sun visible, it can still damage your eyes. The eclipse glasses have a filter on them that is 100,000 times darker than a pair of sunglasses, so even just wearing sunglasses will not protect your eyes sufficiently. Once the sky is dark, you'll see the solar corona. That's your cue to take off your glasses to view. The solar corona is a glowing white ring around the sun made of gases that are usually hidden by the bright lights of the sun. Remember, outside of totality, there is no time when it's safe to look directly at the sun without eclipse glasses. In the run-up to totality, when the sun is completely blocked, that's when we need the glasses. But as soon as the sun is completely eclipsed, you take off the glasses. But then as soon as the sun peeks out again, put them back on. But what if you want to watch the eclipse with your phone and take pictures of it? These glasses are still needed to protect not just your eyes, but your phone too. If you're looking at the eclipse with your phone, you can put your eclipse glasses in front of the camera to protect the, the camera. For a full list of eclipse glasses maintained by the American Astronomical Society of Suppliers and Manufacturers, we have the link with the story on Kens5.com. Jeremy Baker, Kens5. That's amazing. I did not know that you had to protect your phone as well mm -hmm. in yeah. looking at it. Yeah, and if you don't have, say, a phone or glasses, all you have to do is take an index card or piece of paper, poke a hole into it with the sun behind you. You'll see the sun's reflection on the ground in front of you uh -huh. as long as it's sunny. And then you'll see that moon go across the sun and you can look at it that way as well if you don't have glasses. Yeah. So that's another alternative. Or if you're worried if they weren't good glasses, because we've been hearing this morning that Amazon is recalling some glasses because they were sold and they weren't good ones. So you definitely have to check that out. I know mm -hmm. we, I'm sure we have that on kens5.com. You can read more about it, but right now, we want to take a look at Eagle Pass because that's another area where you can uh, view this solar eclipse. And that's a great view right there. Mm -hmm. You just see a sliver of the sun right there. You can tell it looks almost total. And there it is. The sun is pretty much gone. Wow. You can't see anything. It looks like the camera's <laughs> off. It's, yeah. it's actually on. You're looking We're not at something. making that happen. Yeah. You're wow. looking at the moon and the sun right there. Really just the moon, I guess. That's amazing. That's so cool. I wish we had the clear sky to see that here. Mm -hmm. But right here in San Antonio, the Spurs, they are still setting, settling into their new practice facility. It's right next to Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. And what a better way to celebrate than to invite a bunch of kids from all over San Antonio for an educational eclipse party. And that's what's going on right now at the Rocket Lock and Terra as the Frost Plaza is hosting what they're calling an out of this world eclipse watching event. Ken's Five reporter Sue Kalberg is there with some kids who hope the sky is the limit for science based careers. Sue? That's the diamond ring effect. That's what we want to be seeing. Exactly. You know what? And the, I think that this just might be the best venue because everything that we've been talking about is true. But look who's on the stage right now. The Spurs Coyote is here at the Rock at La Pantera, which is the home of the Spurs practice facility. I just I just want to tell you what's going on here. All of those kids that you see out on the plaza, they're lounging around. Many of them are laying flat out because there is just a tiny sliver of a fingernail that is visible uh, up in the sky right now. We have had just a few tiny breaks in the clouds, so we've only been able to see a little bit of it so far, but we've got that amazing 40-foot video wall up there 
and they so, are uh, watching it. We, we watched it come all the way up from Mexico, and that's what the kids are doing right now. They had all kinds of fun uh, things to do while we were waiting for this to happen, and now they're there just soaking up the moment. And it's awesome that they have this opportunity. The people here at Frost Plaza said this is a dream come true for them because this is a new venue, and they wanted to share it with the entire community. At Kens5.com, we've got the link to this plaza because it's free. It's open to the public, and after this day, you're free to come out here too. We're going to stay here and keep our fingers crossed. I've got my glasses in my hand because if the clouds break again, I'm going to be watching it myself. Live at La Contera, Sue Calvert, Ken 5. Love that. Thanks so much, Sue. So it's 127 right now. We just showed you Eagle Pass has total darkness right now. 129 p.m. We're going to see Uvalde in the dark. At 132, that's when Kerrville is going to see that uh, darkness out there, and that's where we have a crew. Yeah, and also in Bernie also at 132. They're also seeing it there. Uh, Hannah Tita, she's live in Bernie. Is that correct? At Main Plaza? Mm -hmm. All right, so let's talk to Hannah. Hannah, you've got about four yes. minutes. Hi. Okay, I'll go quick back in Bernie. It is starting to get dark. Unfortunately, the clouds have now covered the uh, the sun and the moon, but we did get a, a really brief break, so I was hoping to show you guys that, but um, we're getting close here, and, uh, you know, people haven't really had to use their eclipse glasses because it has been so cloudy, but um, everybody, just their eyes are trained on the sky, and they're just, you know, they have been able to get little glimpses of the eclipse. Um, I'm going to show you here at Main Plaza. It's starting to get quiet. Um, you know, it's just really, it's getting dark. Um, unfortunately, uh, that really heavy cloud cover started to come in at about 11.30 this morning, and there hasn't been much of a break since, um, but let's talk about the benefits. Families and friends in the world here together for this really special moment, um, and it has been a big boost for businesses. We're told here, even with the weather cancellations, hotel occupancy rates were at 85%. Oh, it came out for a second and it was gone. Um, the restaurants and the shops, you know, they've all been busy. And they're not quite as busy as the city had anticipated. Originally, officials thought that it might be like another Dickens on Maine, the Christmas festival that brings out tens of thousands of people. Um, but we do know that there are hundreds of people here in the plaza. There are several of their private it's events um, at Dolly Pony and Farm and other people are holding events in the backyard. So there are a lot of people that are uh, holding different events to just be here for this really historic moment. I did meet two ladies uh, that I just wanted to uh, show you what they said really quickly because they actually saw their first eclipse together when they were seven years old and they've been traveling to see eclipses ever since. So they are out here today, one from Arizona, one from Wisconsin. No, it's like, oh, I'm not seeing the here. Here's what they have to say about what the eclipse, what viewing an eclipse is like. It feels a little bit spiritual in a way. It does. I don't know. It puts you in contact with the heavens, sort of. You know, when it's dark, it's you get this sensation that comes over you. It's hard to describe, but it's it just feels like a lot of energy and power and just connected. Yeah. And so, you know, you heard it there that uh, that's really the feeling right now because it is starting to get dark and it, it's such a surreal moment. Even though we can't see, you know, the sun and the moon right now, it is uh, starting to get dark and it's really quiet here in the plaza. So very cool moment. I'm going to throw things back to both you and Audrey in the studio. She's going to need a light soon. Yeah, you so can even can tell at, at the end there, just in her tag at the end, it got so much darker yeah, in that 20 seconds. Calm down, it's like so she quiet. said. Love that. Thanks so much, Hannah. We'll check back in with you in a bit. But right now, we want to go over to Paul because they are expecting to have that total dark. Right now, actually, we want to go over to Bill. He's at Wolf Stadium. I uh, want to check in with him to see how things are going. Lots of students out there, Bill. It's a lot, right? Yeah, Audrey, we got hundreds, even thousands of students out here from school districts all over. It's gotten a lot darker out here. You can definitely feel like it's almost a dusk. And it's starting to get a little cooler, right, girls? It's getting a little cooler. Yeah, yeah, they're getting a little cooler over there, too. So we're getting some breaks once in a while, and we'll see that near total eclipse because it's literally just about two minutes away, and it's just a sliver of the sun. I want to show you from Christensia, San Antonio Public Library, one of the stations here. This is a sun spotter. How does this work? So this is a projection telescope. 
the light from the sun comes through this lens and it bounces off of these three mirrors and then projects an image of the sun onto the paper. So how's the interaction been? I know it's cloudy, but we've had some moments maybe where we spotted it? Uh, earlier in the day, there were a couple moments. It's been fun just explaining how the telescope works and that it shows enough detail that you can actually see the cooler areas of the sun projected onto the paper. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so now that we're getting dark, I know that, of course, the sunspot will be used in future endeavors, right? Yes, for sure, because you can use it anytime. It doesn't have to be an eclipse. That's true, yeah. exactly. Well, thanks for all you're doing from the San Antonio Public Library, one of the many great partners that are out here. It's really getting dark now. This is really cool. Oh, yeah. Oh, here we go. Here we go. See it? Oh, just a quick sliver. Thank you, Crescencia. That was great. Thank you so much. All right, we're back to Jeremy. Oh, there it is. <laughs> you can feel the excitement when everyone can see something. You know someone's a real meteorologist when they get excited about it like Bill just did there. Yeah, that so we're so starting cool. to see things go really dark. It's really exciting. That totality is starting to hit. Right now, though, we want to go to another crew. Yeah, Kerrville, uh, we've got uh, Paul Morellis is in Kerrville, where totality is right about now for the mm -hmm. next three minutes or so. So he's probably in the dark right now. At least we hope he is. Do you feel it getting cooler? Oh, yeah, there, there it is. Looks like night. Wow. Oh, man. I, I, I tell you guys, uh, hair standing up on my arms, everybody right when it went totally dark, nighttime, just freaking out. Lots of, I couldn't help it myself. I think I was cheering for really no good reason. And as you look around, I mean, it looks totally like it would at nighttime. I would say it looks like 8.30 at night, 9 o'clock. It is just the most awesome thing I think I've ever seen. Clouds are not, forget about it. You've got to see a total solar eclipse. It's just totally blowing me away. And everybody here is just so, just, I can't even describe it. I can't describe it, but I will do this. This gentleman right here was in cloudy conditions in 2017. And just describe for folks at home what it's like being here today. Well, in 2017, it's just exactly like it is here today or this evening. Uh, today, uh, it's, it's, it's like this evening, it's, right? It's, it's dark, and uh, yeah, it, it's just like it's nighttime. You know, I, I, they told me it was going to get dark. I've never seen this total solar eclipse. They told me, come here, come here real quick. Look at this guy. This is the kind of emotion that you've got out here. What's your name, son? Kyle. Kyle, it makes you just want to freak out, right? I mean, it really does. It's kind of a weird thing when it goes from daylight to dark like that. It's yeah. like immediately, too. Yeah, yeah, like immediately, yeah. right? It was, it was like somebody turned off the lights, right? <laughs> the sun is gone. Yeah. The sun is completely gone. Yeah. It, it is, it's right above us, and it's completely gone. And it's completely gone. Is this the, w w you were going to remember this the rest of your life, won't you? Yes, definitely. How, how old are you? Ten. Ten. All right, so... You won't, well, yeah, I was going to say the next one, but here the one in Tyson, it, it, never mind. It's an awesome, awesome thing. Thank you for being with us. Thank yeah, you so much. You okay. Oh, yeah, that's right. What, what, tell us about that program. Uh, the SETA program is like a Space Engineering Technology Academy. Uh -huh. That's what the SETA stands for. And I'm going there uh, in, in middle and high school. In middle and high school, okay. Yeah. Well, well, thanks for being with us, and congratulations. Congratulations on that. Okay, so the shadow is coming across the earth at about 1100 miles per hour and this just trips me out that we're in totality for this long very long time and as i look around i'm not sure how much the camera is picking up but i mean it looks exactly like it does at night you can see the lights here uh everything just i mean the street lights i'm not sure you can pick that up. matter of fact one thing i noticed right away is when it went totally dark is all of a sudden like that you could spot the airplanes that were flying in the sky just just incredible out here in Kerr and everybody is quiet now kind of enjoying the view I think here's the thing that, that is that is bad and that we're missing is there's been a lot of total like solar activity and so if it was clear skies out here right now what we'd be seeing is spikes from the corona curls and 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 wisps and things like that also as you look up what we would be seeing as well is you'd be able to see Jupiter and Venus and you'd also be able to see that uh, that comet probably 
probably. But, uh, you know, we're not able to see that. And it looks like to me that we're starting to brighten up. Matter of fact, if you look on the horizon now, sure enough, you can see that uh, we're starting to see. We had like almost like a 360 degree sunrise, and now you can definitely see that the total solar eclipse here in Kerrville is passing by, and everybody's just enjoying what a, what a, what a, sh what a nice, awesome thing. Real quick, can you describe what we just went through? It's awesome. It's so incredible. This is the first time I've ever seen a full solar eclipse, so I'm amazed. And this may be the last one being my age. Yeah. So. W what's your name? Where are you from? I'm Susan Velasquez. I actually live in Kerrville, but I used to live in San Antonio. Okay. All so right. I'm amazed. I got to see. Look at how look at how quick it turned bright again. I know it's so amazing. I called in sick today. <laughs> <laughs> well, we won't uh, tell anybody about that. And there we go. You know, I was talking about how the shadow just moves at 1,100 miles an hour across the face of the Earth, and that was very quick. How that just moved across uh, right there. So, uh, Audrey and uh, Jeremy, what do you? What, yeah, Audrey, Audrey and Jeremy, what do you think? I mean, you got to see from total dark, and now we don't need the light anymore. The sun is coming back. That's amazing. I Paul. wonder if she can get out of this day of work by saying she has eclipse fever or yeah. something like that. It's a, yeah, Susan, we understand why you did what you did. Uh, so, so, yeah, something tells me her boss is going to forgive her, I yep. think. Absolutely. It looked amazing, Paul. It was great to see it, like, from actual darkness to when it came back the sun you could see you know the light there and lots of people experiencing that right now and it happened so quickly it's interesting how everyone just like animals were so quiet in the dark and as soon as the light the sun came back out everyone was just talking again like normal and you got to think um all the cities and towns who prepared because you saw when it went dark all the lights came on mm -hmm. and that's not normal for this time of day it's 1 30 so they had to prepare and plan for that you saw people starting to get up which they were saying if you're out at an event stay there because they're expecting a lot of traffic as this starts to wrap up here in a bit but right now we do want to check in with another one of our crews yes yeah, sue kalberg she is going to join us she's been a Live with a bunch of kids throughout the day today. And uh, Sue, talk about what you just went through. Obviously, it's already light there where you are, and uh, it was dark a few minutes ago, I assume. Exactly. And you know, uh, we're tied over here to the edge of the parking lot, but the excitement was so high, I grabbed my camera and I went running through the crowd in the total darkness. And you know what we had here that nobody else had? The Spurs Coyote. He was hugging the kids. The kids were loving on him. It was awesome, the level of excitement and jumping up and down. And in addition to that, uh, Fiesta Texas, right next door, had a fireworks show going on. We couldn't see the uh, explosions from our part of the venue here, but we could hear them. So that was exciting. The, uh, the kids of all ages, you know, we've got everybody from like kinders to high school and college kids here. And it's such a refreshing thing to see people of all ages joining together in this kind of pure joy. And that is what the people who created this venue and invited everybody to this party, that's what they were after. That spirit of wonder and awe so that they think that the kids who come here and experience this will want to make science and technology right, their careers. Listen to what uh, the, the folks from Frost Bank had to say about throwing this awesome party. I hope it inspires them uh, that they're, they're special, they're significant. And I hope we get some astronauts out of this. I hope we get some uh, scientists that will then give back like these scientists here today. I mean, they're so generous with their time. I hope the kids just really feel like they're loved on, that they're special, and that they can be a scientist. They can be an engineer. Uh, they can be... That's what we're seeing here. The kids, the kids have been working their way through all these stations, learning about STEM careers. All of the people that I talked to, we're going to hear from some of them later, all of the scientists who made this happen, they have it in their heart to help these kids live the dream into the future. It's not going to be a four-minute event because they want this to go forward in the hearts of all 500 kids. Live at La Cantera, Sue Kelberts, 10-5. 
love the, that mission and hopefully it can get accomplished. Yeah, and I know they say it's just four and a half minutes and it's all over, but this will linger for years to come hopefully. And Hannah Tita is live in Bernie and we saw it getting dark for her, uh -huh. but then of course the light came out super fast. Hannah, what do you think of what happened? Audrey and uh, Jeremy, you guys missed it. It was so cool out here. I'm still in awe. I really didn't know what to expect, but that was, it was crazy. It was like twilight. <laughs> I am joined by Larry uh, Woods. He's with Visit Bernie. And this is just a really historic moment for the town because this hasn't happened in, you know, hundreds of years at least for uh, the city of Bernie. Uh, tell me, you know, what it was like seeing the plaza full of people as it got dark in the middle of the day. It's awesome. We were walking up and down the street, Main Street, and the plaza's full of people, and everybody came out to enjoy it. You know, knowing that we weren't going to be able to see it, but still, it was going to get dark, and it got dark real quick and lightened up pretty neat. And like we were just talking, you know, for a lot of us old guys, this is probably it for uh, our total uh, eclipse day. So it's really kind of cool. And everybody was really responsive and cheered and had a good time and just made, uh, you know, a, a great day of it. It was a really good crowd that you had out here. And one thing that was interesting, you told me earlier, people came from all over for this. And, you know, even though, unfortunately, the cloud cover was heavy and we couldn't mm -hmm. see it, you know, the entire time, yeah. just little glimpses, yeah. um, you know, it just seemed like everybody still, you know, really took in that moment. Mm -hmm. uh, where are the people, you know, from, you know, the people who stopped by the visitor center? Uh, you know, what are some of the stories you well, heard? Just on the way here to, to talk to you, I met a couple from Rome and they're going to spend an extra two days here but over the weekend we met folks from taiwan japan uh, germany and i'm trying to think of and then all over the united states and a lot of folks have come a long way and this is their vacation and they chose to come to bernie texas in the whole country so that's just really neat to to be able to let them experience what the texas hill country is about the friendly people the you know the shops and main street and and i don't see one disappointed person I have to tell you something funny. I had maybe four or five people come up to me and ask me, how do you pronounce Bernie? Right. And so, you know, a lot of people came here, didn't even know how to say the city, but this is going to be kind of burned in their mind. And I know you had mentioned you really wanted them to have a good experience to come back. Do you think that after your conversations with people that people will come back and see what else Bernie has to offer? Oh, my God, yes. I've handed out my business card to folks. I said, if you want to come back, you know, give me a holler. and We'll help you with your, your reservations. And one couple that had never, ever been to Texas and into Bernie, we're just thrilled about how hospital everybody in Texas is, how friendly are they are, the quality of shopping, the quality of the restaurants downtown Bernie. So it's been good, and we appreciate everything that y'all do for us down here. Well, this is a very charming town. Thank you so much, Larry. I'm going to throw things back to you, Jeremy and Audrey, and I will have videos, and you'll get to see the full effect here in Bernie coming up tonight on Ken's 5. Thanks so much, Hannah. And right now we want to go to a live shot of Dallas because they're another one of those major cities that are going to be able to view this and be in that totality. Yeah, their totality started about four minutes ago. Uh, so at 140 and there it lasts about the wow. same time. Wow, you can see that Corona there. It's almost all the way around except on the upper right side. So they're not having the clouds that we're having. This yeah, is the more... further north, it's drier air and we got stuck in South Texas where all the clouds are, unfortunately. Darn it. A lot of people traveled here to our area to the hill country to san antonio to experience it but man dallas has that view oh yeah that was great interesting to see the photographer switching back and forth between different lenses yes. to try to get the best shot that's awesome well right now we want to go back to bill who's at wolf stadium because you had some really eager students out there bill right before totality hey How audrey was it? hey jeremy great to see you guys all the students are filing out we've got stony brook park yeah Spicewood Park, Stony Brook. I don't know where that came from. Spicewood Park! Love you guys! Way to go! You know, even though the clouds were pretty thick, we had that moment, and it got dark for about 30 seconds, and we even got the diamond ring effect out here, which is a spectacular view, and it broke just enough cloud cover to see that diamond ring. I think what was so cool is that everyone got real quiet in that moment. And it was just a special thing that, you know, you only experience once in a lifetime. And the people that you're with, that's what makes it so special. And it's kind of one of those common denominator moments of nature where we're all experiencing something together that's so much larger than we are. And so it was a real special moment for our souls, I think. Hey, guys, how's it going? Did you have a good time at the eclipse? 
He loves his mom, and I, I'm glad to hear that. That's awesome. Tell mom about it. Oh, we love you, mom. See, don't forget, continue to love your mothers, young men. W. W. All right. What school are you guys from? Somerset. All right, Somerset. Good to see y'all. Thanks for coming. Love Jesus too. Amen. All right, Chantel. That's awesome. And he even wore a Padres cap. That's great. Home opener out here at the Wolf is coming tomorrow night. And they're off to a great start. They sweat. Who'd y'all sweep this weekend, Dave? Amarillo got swept. Missions are coming home for the home opener tomorrow night. 7.05 is first pitch. Back to you guys in the studio. Lots of excitement there. Thanks, Phil. Yeah, and the next time, if you didn't get to see this eclipse, you're going to have to wait till 2044, North Dakota and Montana, or the 2045 eclipse from California to Florida with the longest totality in Oklahoma. So you have to travel there, but at least it's in our lifetimes. Yeah, absolutely. And it's 147 right now. And at about 150, the shadow will totally leave Texas, having traveled 480 miles through the state at a little more than 25 minutes. And now it's headed to the Northeast, right? There's some major cities that are gonna see it. Yeah, my mom just texted me a few minutes ago and from Philadelphia, they've got 90% totality there. So it's they're still gonna have some sunlight there, but even there, they're excited. So much of the country gets to see this. Absolutely, yeah. Some other states that are gonna see it, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York, New Hampshire. I have family in New Hampshire. They're preparing for it. So lots of different cities are holding these watch parties because it is, you know, it's such a rare event. Like like you said, 2343 will be the next time San Antonio is going to experience something like that. So I hope you got to go out and experience that totality. Yeah, 300 years plus is a long time, that's for Very sure. Very long time. <laughs> and those four minutes, they flew by, didn't they? They did. They did fly by. And, you know, hopefully you got to experience it with that. Like Paul said, it got a little cooler. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, those clouds, but Dallas, they had a great that, view. That was an incredible view. Yeah, they looked out there, really. Mm -hmm. And it's a good thing since, of course, there they will see another eclipse for over 300 years, too. Absolutely. Well, thanks so much for watching. We want you to stay tuned for our next special on the Great American Eclipse. That's coming up soon at 2.30. We'll see you then here on Ken's 5.